Well, hey everybody, what's up? Thank you for joining me for this video. It's It's been a minute, I know. Uh, my intentions were to get back to this YouTube thing with a lot more regularity not long ago, but pandemic life, right? Things have changed quite dramatically uh, for everybody around the world, for our family included, and that means that a lot of our plans have gone up in smoke. Plans to hit the road by now, plans to have our new rig ready and rolled out, uh, plans to shoot a tour video for you and tell you about our future plans uh, as we begin to travel again. But none of those things, or should I, I should probably say not all of those things, panned out the way we had hoped for. So today I'm making a run to the storage unit to get some things out of our new rig, and I thought, let's make lemonade out of lemons let's just take you along and and even though it's not ready even though it's not the tour video i wanted to shoot even though it's not the way i had planned it let's go ahead and show you the new rig so that you can share in the excitement as we're kind of dealing with everything the same way you are and figuring out how in the world we're going to get to the next phase of life get back to traveling when and and how it's safest and best for our family so come on along i want to show you the new rig i think you're going to like it Now, before I actually show you which one is ours, I want to take you around and see if maybe you can guess. I'll give you a few guesses here. Maybe that one? No. Not that one. That one? Mm, not yet. Too many kids. That one, maybe? I don't know. Maybe the motorcycle. Right, that one? No, 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 no. These are all nice rigs. Not ours yet, though. Do any other RVers find themselves going to the storage unit and shopping for RVs? Maybe like for the next one or the, for the dream RV? What I do every single time I'm here. Hmm, getting warmer, getting warmer, getting warmer, closer. Closer. Yep, there you have it. That's our new rig. It's a Class A, a gasser, not a diesel. It's a 2016 Winnebago Vista LX 35B, B as in bunkhouse. So before we jump over there and look at the RV itself, I thought I'd spend just a few minutes telling you about why we made this change. In the years since we've started this channel, we've gone from a travel trailer to a fifth wheel with a large, beautiful diesel truck, to a Class C, and now to a Class A. And each one of those moves was a specific move to fit our lifestyle and our plan. And I think that's important when you're RVing. You make sure that you have the right rig for your lifestyle, and if it doesn't work out, swap it out for something else. There's always somebody looking to buy what you have. And so the reason we went to a Class A was specifically so we could move to a bunkhouse. Now we know they make Class C bunkhouses, we looked at some of those, but um, for what we paid for this thing and what it was gonna end up being for the Class C bunkhouse of a little newer model year, uh, we got an incredible deal and uh, it ended up working out in our favor. We weren't quite planning on going Class A, but we ended up going there because it just worked so well for us. And so now, instead of shoving all three of our kids into one queen size bed, uh, they now each have their own individual bunk. There's more independence, more fun. And we've really decided over the last few months that travel is going to be a much bigger part of our life going forward. You know, we were full time for almost a year. Then we had to slow things down uh, just because of the medical needs of one of our kids. And now we're ready to ramp it back up. We're ready to start traveling a whole lot more. And we want to be in a rig that can hold us for quite a few years as our boys grow and one that we can basically go anywhere and do anything with. So that's what we're talking about. So let's head on over there and check it out. All right, so she's a little bit dirty. But uh, I want to show you the inside. I can tell you one thing. The most exciting thing for me as a dad and a driver is that I will be here and my children 
will be way back there. Uh, I get, I haven't measured it out yet. I'm hoping it's like 10 feet between me and the kids on the back of my head as we're traveling going down the road. When are we gonna stop for food? When are we gonna be there? That's not true. My kids don't do that. They travel great. Uh, this kitchen area is much bigger than the Class C. Uh, it was something that gave us a little bit of trouble in the Class C was preparing meals. Well, now we've got tons of room to prepare our meals. This is, I'm really excited about this. Double sized fridge. We had a double fridge in our fifth wheel. Now we have one again, double sized freezer. And for the first time, we're gonna have an ice maker in a rig, which um, is really exciting to me. This is where our boys will spend most of their time as we're traveling, buckled in, uh, cup holders on this. It's the little things that I think are just amazing because they made life hard without them. But we got this sofa here, it pulls out. I mean, it's comfortable. I could just see myself sitting here, relaxing. When are we gonna be there? I don't know, whatever. These seats also swivel around and this is a pretty cool thing. Are you ready for this cool stuff? Ready? Here we go. <laughs> and here we go. It's a bed, it's a bunk. And when we're done and ready to roll down the road, it just goes right back up. Just as simple as that. But this is the other thing we're really excited about. The B part of the 35B, these are the bunks. It's not a huge bunk. I tried to get in there. It's a little uncomfortable for a six foot tall dude, but for kids, it's gonna be amazing. And this is what they're most excited about. Ready? They got like personal TVs in there, even though we don't let them watch a ton of TV. There will be times where it will be nice to say, go to your bunk and watch Frozen for the 15th time. Then directly across from the bunks, we have a bathroom. This is just for the boys. So they don't have to pee all over the floor in our bathroom, come on. Then right next to the bathroom, we got the command center, which is pretty standard stuff. We've got our controls for our generator, uh, all of our tank levels and stuff like that. And then we back into the master, which has got the queen size bed. We've got all of our stuff over here. Got a TV as well as our our cabinets and whatnot. Oh, lights inside, I didn't know that was there. Pocket doors, both here, here, and on the other side there. So there's three levels. You can make that a room and this a room and all that stuff a room all by itself. And then finally we have the master bath. Now this is something that we had in our, our fifth wheel, our grand design, two bathrooms, and it really makes a big difference when you have five people Somebody's gotta go while somebody else is going and somebody's taking a shower or something. It's a must if you have a big family of at least three kids. So we've got commode here, big old counter space, I think for um, a, an RV. My wife is really gonna love this. Lots of cabinet space, sink, and then this shower. The shower is kind of ridiculous. It's, it's huge. I don't know if I can show you the inside, but what, what's going on there? So that's kind of just a quick little tour of the RV. I didn't want to go into too great a detail because like I said, we're, we're not quite settled into this thing. We've not taken a trip in it. We've done nothing but purchase it and put it in storage, knowing that we were ready to leave in the spring. We're planning to leave soon, but uh, what we are going to do is we're going to head to Ohio to my private garage, AKA my parents' house, uh, where all the tools are and where all the knowledge and expertise on automotive things is with my father. And we are most likely going to do some major, major upgrades to this bad boy. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. Why with a two-year-old motorhome, three-year-old motorhome uh, with only 5,000 miles on it, would you need to do a lot of updates and fixes? Well, the truth is this was stored outdoors, which is a, a huge problem if you live in a state that gets a lot of sun like Colorado or even Arizona. The sun does horrible things to the top of these rigs and this is no exception. It's still in pretty good shape. We're gonna reseal the top of the roof, replace some vents, make sure everything's just looking really good before we go rolling down the road. And we also have some small paint issues up on the crown, uh, not on the front, but on the edges uh, of the top of the RV from the sun that we're gonna try to address and figure out what to do with along with some standard class a suspension upgrades now this is something i didn't know about before i purchased this thing but i started to read about what i should be doing to prepare myself 
This already drives like a dream compared to our Class C, um, but I know that there's some big problems with these Class A's factory. That sway is a big problem. That tail wag is a big problem. That um, you know uh, oversteer and, and emergency steering for like a blowout or hitting a pothole is a problem. And so I'm planning on doing several upgrades. I'll talk about them here, but we may not do exactly this. Uh, we'll see where it ends up. We're still kind of researching these things and figuring it out. First and foremost, I want to put a safety steering stabilizer on the front axle. This is basically a giant shock that goes um, parallel with the front axle and prevents the steering wheel from jerking really hard when you have a blowout or you hit a big pothole or maybe run off the edge of the road in these wide vehicles. It also, I hear, makes the steering uh, experience much easier. So I'm gonna do one of those. Uh, I'm also considering Sumo Springs. Um, these are uh, kind of additives that go on each corner of the RV that will help it uh, to not rock as much, but I've heard they stiffen up the ride. So I'm still researching whether or not I wanna do that. Uh, I wanna put a, a steer track, I think is what it's called, on the rear axle that prevents tail wag. It hooks right into the axle itself and then mounts to the frame. And then as well, the other option is, do we put additional anti-sway bars? There are some factory anti-sway bars on these, but I hear they're not uh, that effective. So um, there's Roadmaster makes some really beefy ones that I'm thinking about putting maybe front or rear or maybe just rear. Uh, haven't quite decided, but those are a lot of the suspension upgrades we're talking about because we just want this thing to be as safe as possible. I'm gonna be the primary driver, but uh, Jenna has learned to drive our past rig or drivable, the Class C, and it was quite nice because I could sometimes take some time off and do a little work or take a nap while she's driving down the road, but we want to make sure it's safe and she's comfortable with that before we do it, and we want to make sure that we're safe rolling down the road because we've only been doing this drivable thing for about a year now, and uh, we're just getting used to how it feels. I almost forgot one of the things that we've already done to the rig as a matter of kind of first priority before we did anything, before we moved it, was replace the tires on this rig. Now, because it was stored outside, the tires were only a couple years old, but they were already starting to crack on the sidewalls, which is a really dangerous situation. I've always read that you should never let your RV tires go past about five years. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Uh, I've heard people say they go six on theirs, but I would rather be under than over on that number. So uh, even with just three years on the tires, because it was stored outside, we decided to go ahead and replace them. And instead of going with the, the factory tires, which were extremely expensive, like twice as much as they should have been, um, they were a special size tire you could only buy from that manufacturer. Um, we decided to go with Toyo tires, did a lot of research. We resized our tires just a little bit. These are actual semi-truck tires. They have a higher load rating. Uh, they're a little bit wider tire, so they may give a little stiffer ride, but they're very stable, very reliable Toyo tires. Uh, these are 255, 70R, 22.5 fives in case you are wondering. I think so far in the test drives that I've taken, you know, 20, 30 minutes down the road, it's been a really good upgrade. I'm glad that we did it. So this is the new rig. Uh, I cannot wait for my wife to get in here and get her hands on it. She's going to get rid of things that, that she hates. Like I know you might like, I don't, I don't know who likes this. I don't want to offend anybody, but she does not like this crazy pattern stuff, this crazy pattern stuff. And I can't say I blame her. It's kind of a weird look. Um, so she's gonna be uh, working with a uh, custom seamstress, also known as my mother, um, to recover these things, make them look a little more our speed, something that uh, she can be proud of and something that she uh, really likes because this really becomes our home away from home when we're traveling. And if you've done any amount of traveling, you know that it's important to make sure you have a space that feels like home when you're in it. So there'll be plants hanging from every corner. There'll be macrame. There'll be all kinds of things and new fabrics and throw pillows on every surface. But uh, above all else, we just hope that this is a memory machine and we can go out and create experiences with our kids that are unforgettable because we only have five short summers left with our oldest, um, eight left with our middle, and we still got 12 left with the tiniest guy, but we're trying to maximize all the time we have with them so that we can enjoy life together, both in a rig when we're stable and um, not moving and when we are out there traveling and seeing this country.
Now, my whole reason for coming to the unit today was to get some chairs out of this thing because all of our RV equipment had been taking up space in our garage for a long time. And once we bought a new rig, then we went ahead and put it all in there. I, I already organized the interiors and started to figure out where I wanted everything. But now the chairs that I put in here about a month ago are needed at the house. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these chairs and then I'm gonna head home. I'm gonna just tell you, this one compartment flips up. All the rest of them are Class A style. They flip to the side. I hate this one that flips up. All right, one last check here. Coach battery off, chassis battery off. I feel like I have to be a freak about that because if you forget to do that, you come back to dead batteries, it's not a good thing. All right, so there you have it. That is the new rig, the new setup. That's what we're gonna be traveling in and we look forward to learning along with you uh, as we experience Class A for the first time. I know there's a lot of you out there that have a lot of great information about these Class A's, especially gassers, how to make them ride better, run better. I'm learning that in my research about the suspension. So if you have any tips for us, let us know. We're not gonna be hitting the road for another couple of weeks. And even then we're not gonna be out there long-term. We're just moving to the garage where we can do our updates and get going. But uh, really looking forward to the journey of learning this RV, getting to experience a big part of the country in, in a way that we couldn't have before. All right, well, it appears as though our time together this week is over. I'm gonna try to bring you brand new videos every single week as we're getting this thing ready. Uh, we are gearing up to do traveling more. I'd like to even go back if I have time and share some of our old travel videos that never got made. Footage that I have that's never been turned into videos. I wanna share those things with you uh, so we can share more of our adventures and hear about your adventures. So thanks again for watching. If you're not already, please subscribe there's not always tour videos or technical videos like this we're going to be doing some real traveling and sharing the country with you as we go along our family of five the wandering arrows as we call ourselves uh, and we're really looking forward to sharing that with you we're looking forward to getting back out there and hope you'll join us for the journey so click subscribe down below and don't miss a single video i think i want one of these i think i do you ever seen one of these it's built like a tank for sure, when we have no kids, that's it right there. Winnebago edition of the Mercedes Sprinter. Off-road tires can go anywhere. Overlander, solar, ah, it's mean.